Oh yeah. Oh, this record again. Yeah. They never say it's like the recording in the world. Yeah, worst case, we, yeah, we do the thing again. Yeah, that is just not funny. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, hopefully the Zoom people can hear me also. All right. Yep. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to the Unity Workshop. So before we start, right, please scan the QR code. This will be the slides for today. Yeah, I'll give you like uh one minute, two minutes, just to scan the QR code. Yeah. Actually, I should also post the, the link on Discord so you all can have it. Yeah. I'll do that too. On uh it'll be on the where is that again? Learn Unity. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you can either uh wait uh, you better you can either scan the QR code or you can use the from from this code you can get the links. Yeah. So today we'll just be going through the basics of Unity. So we only have one hour session today because there was a talk and everything. So yeah. Hopefully everybody has uh done the instructions, like download the Unity I that the Unity Hub, set up your ID because uh we only have one hour today, so we'll be trying to go quite fast. But don't worry, so if you haven't done anything or like haven't downloaded anything, uh, it will be recorded, so you can just rewatch it and follow along at a, at a later time. Yep, so let's start with the Unity Workshop. So welcome to the Unity game, uh, GDG Game Start Unity Workshop. So this workshop is uh, beginner friendly, so those people that are like already advanced in Unity, already made their first game, I hope you learned something, but there won't be much for you to learn. So this will be like purely for beginners. Okay, so yeah. So this will be what we'll be going through today, just for part one, which is just one hour thing. So today's session is just one hour. So sadly, no programming. Yeah, because majority of you here are computing students. So yeah, today you won't be having programming, sadly. Okay. <laughs> okay, so yeah, first will be introduction. Then you set up your first project. So if you ever make your first game, this will be your first game project that you'll be doing. Then I'll introduce you to about the Unity Editor. So Unity Editor, uh, just a basic tools that you can use. Louder. Okay. Okay. So uh, basic tools that you can use for Unity, and also the Unity Asset Store. So you might be wondering, most of you are computing student as well, same as me. You all don't know how to draw or don't know how to make music. So Unity Asset Store is a place that you get all the resources that you need, like if in order to create your first game or in order to like have like a scratch game. So once you have like an idea, then you can just take all these assets from the asset store. Some can be free, or if you, if you really, really like it, you can pay. But uh, you can use this as placeholder art or placeholder sound, all this thing. So once you create a game, and you can show like, you can recruit artists, all this thing to join in your game if they find this interesting. But at the meantime, like, you don't want just to be showing people like squares and all these things and like uh, primitive shapes. So if you can find like a free asset uh, pack from the Unity Asset Store, and later I'll tell you how to get free ones. As well as you can see, there's many, many, many assets from uh tools, uh music, art, and everything. Okay, then we'll be going through the basic importing of Unity assets and setting our Unity assets. Then last one will be Unity component system. Yep. So go in detail later when we I'm I'm when I'm covering these topics. Okay. So first introduction is why you all use a game engine. So some people say why not I can just use C to code my entire game, but Mm, if you do that, you have to handle a lot of things. Like you have to handle how your art, your artists, uh, artists are going to like import in their items, like your manage your inventory management, all this thing, and how like uh let's say physics works in Unity, like right, uh a lot of the physics right you is done for you already. You can just import or add add a rigid body or a physics component to your uh game objects or your game items, right? Then you automatically interact, so you don't need to like code the gravity, no need code acceleration graphs, all this thing. So that's the one of the good things about Unity game engine. You handle like advanced things like physics, lighting, rendering, and in-game clocks. So these are the things that if you use C or like from a you do everything from ground up, you'll take very, very long. So Unity like is more of like a not say not say you won't be doing a lot of coding, but uh you will like extract some areas right that you don't need to think so much. 
So what the most important thing that Unity will help you out is do is right is to make a game that is fun and is playable rather than trying to think of this kind of advanced stuff. Ah, uh, yes, correct. But you don't need to touch any of the. So as the first half of the summary, the summary is the shell of the top top solution. So we can get the area. That is the most thing of the system type. Yeah, okay. The one is. They are modifying the top top code. Yeah, yeah, so this one we're talking about is more of like advanced tools that you can, like uh, some game developed studios, right? Let's say uh, you want to do something that Unity doesn't offer. So these are the two developers for the, the game companies who make this like specific tool using your C++. But although, okay, Unity itself will be written in C Sharp. But uh, if you want to change any of the things that like, like under the hood, right, you need to use C++. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's open source, right? Uh, Unity is not, unlike Godot, uh, Unity is not open source. But you need to buy yeah, you need to pay money, like yeah, company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, companies that use Unity, they are they actually pay money so they are able to like update the system a little bit more so they have more control over the system. Yeah. So yeah. So this is why we use a game engine. So yeah. So next one will be the popular game engines. I think everybody know already. So these are the popular game engines that we all have. Today we'll be talking about Unity. There are things like Unreal and Godot. So Unity, the good thing is you can do 2D plus 3D and also like it's like script language. So it's quite easy for you to get along. So for Unreal, it's of course the king of 3D. If you already want to do 3D, you can explore the Unreal engine. Okay, but however, our club doesn't have a lot of Unreal experts, so we won't be teaching this. And Godot is the other workshop that is ha uh, happening con concurrently now. Yeah, so why Unity? I think you all see this slide before. So it's easy to pick up, well documented. You can go and like find any class or any of the functions that you need. They will give you with an example as well. Okay, so and we have a large developer de community. Uh, and it's also used like in the professional game development space. Yeah, which is different from Godot. Godot is a uh, more of a what do you call that? Uh oh, niche, hobby-ish kind of game engine. Yeah. But whereas Unity and Unreal are those uh, game engines that are used in the game development space. So and Unity is multi-platform as well as multi-purpose. So multi-platform as in you just write for one platform. Like you write this code and you can uh deploy in your Android, iOS, uh Windows, everything. Is uh you just need to make sure you're using the right components, such as like instead of hard coding like for your inputs, right? Hard coding like uh keyboard factor A, you can use something called an input manager to like uh do the direction. So if you use input manager instead of hard coding like key key presses, you'll be able to do for all. So for example, you don't need you won't be like specific to window specific to uh, Apple. But yeah, you can use that input manager. So Unity helps you do all these things. So you can use multi-platform. So multi-purpose. So multi-purpose is you can make 2D and 3D games, like I said before. And you can also do like AR and VR. So augmented reality and virtual reality applications. Okay, so there's no upfront cost for Unity. Good. But uh, there's also a caveat that if you earn more than 10K in the past 12 months, you have to start paying them. Yeah. Okay, so this is your two weeks plan. So the first week, okay, we don't need to see so much, but the first week we'll be going about Unity Asset Store, the Town Map system. The next week we'll be going about character controls, which will be the actual programming part that everybody loves, then the collisions. And finally, we'll be going for the beautifying your game, so making the final product. So it'll be the UI elements as well as the animations of your characters. Okay, so now you can start following along with me already for the game actual making. <laughs> okay, so everybody just press new project choose the correct editor version. So yeah. just use the latest one. I think we'll be using 2021. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, for, for this case, right, we're just standardizing. So we're using the latest one. But uh, And we are not using any advanced features. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. So uh, bugs you might introduce is like maybe the new lighting system or this thing. But yeah, we'll not be using any of the... <laughs> So, uh, so, 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 
the number at the back is just raw pixels. So because of that, sometimes the Unity version may be unstable. But if you take LPS, that's a they support full weight, they support for like over five years, and that means that that's like the like the good version, so like the bug, slightly bug free one. So it's kind of stable already. So it's good to take all the LPS one, especially if you're doing games, you are creating games that's for like long term development. Yeah, LPS stands for long term support. So Unity will have will answer any of the question regarding this one. So, but if you use things like alpha and beta, they will not be responsible for any bugs. Okay, so we click the latest one, 2021. Okay, uh, if you're using 2020, there might be a little bit of a UI difference. So hopefully everybody's using 2021. But yeah, okay, then we select 2D and you can just name your game anything you want. So since it's going to be a platformer, so I'm just going to anyhow just name... Uh, well, because we're reading lighting, is it? Uh, oh, okay. That is new. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, NG here says that uh, if you want to be like more, if like, is it run efficient? Uh, more graphic efficient. Uh, it will be new or universal random uh, random tech time, which is actually good as uh, if you are doing for things for mobile as well, because mobile can't really handle like super good graphics. Actually, with mobile technology now. It can sort of, but URP is more uh, graphic efficient. Yep, so you select 2D URP. Does it have like more assets from like the Uh, URP is just, it lacks lesser for certain graphics, and also it has more lighting features, shader features. Like, uh, if you don't put URP, if I remember correctly, you can't even access the shader graph. And, uh, shader graph. So, uh, shader graph is like, uh, it can make like all these special effects on your screens. So like uh, if you want a more uh what do you call it? like the hologram, yeah, if you want a hologram effect, shader graph can do it. You just need like a job. So uh URP actually handles all that. Uh they provide the features for those. And if I remember correctly, 2D lighting like, only URP can do it also. Oh URP can only use normal no, uh, universal running pattern can use on mobile. Oh, okay. Not so what's the difference between it? Would be the maybe your RP and the three D the three D which one? The 3D is a different is it? No, it's, it's uh, the 3D after the URP. Yeah. Uh, 3D, uh, URP is also, even the 3D version is uh, more uh, efficient. But I remember when there's some, uh, some things that you can't do, like certain uh, post-processing effects that you cannot do for URP, uh, for URP because the way the system is different. So you actually have to manually code up your shaders to improve 3D. Which is good for some people because they like to have more power over their uh, shaders instead of using the shader bar. Oh, so, as you are advised, the CD is going to be better. Oh, and you are advised, so I have the shader bar code, but the shader bar code is not better. Ah, yeah. So, fragments, what is uh, the idea? Yeah, because uh, you have to use another pipeline, which is uh, different from the one that you write. So, they don't use, use another kind of shader architecture. Uh, so they don't use the uh, so you are here, but you all use the system as what we can find correctly. They use sort they I, yeah, they, they like hide away most of the things. So, so they use some and shader or what is that kind of shader? Use both actually because they hide away some things. So you can't really it's a little bit more harder for you to write. I don't know if that's similar. It's just based on my experience. <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry, but, but sorry for the long. Yeah, we'll continue. Yeah, okay. So just select the two D URP and just name your platformer anything. So we're making a two D platformer game. So you just can name it anything you want. Then you just press create project. This one will take a bit of time, and this is where Godot will come and say, "Oh my God, my my engine is a lot faster." But yeah, this is one. It will take some time. Yeah. <laughs> It was faster in 2019, but yeah. uh, with the recent version, it's been taking a lot longer. Yeah, so, yeah. so this is the reason or the the, 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 the kind of excuse that Godot like to give if you want to if you want to convert you. Like. So yeah, my engine is faster. Okay, yeah, it will be about two minutes. Oh, you guys got any questions? Yeah, definitely should answer question. So when we all learn Shader and learn the state data, Oh, uh, we don't teach that here. Why? Because we... 
Okay, so for for SEM 1, right, it will be more of a beginner-friendly uh, workshop. So maybe for SEM 2, if you have suggestions like that, we can take in consideration and we can do workshops like that. But for SEM 1, like since a lot of people here are like uh, year 1 computing, so we try to accommodate for the majority first. Yeah. So for next SEM, there might be more advanced things like AR, VR kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah, hopefully we can find somebody that yeah, can appreciate this. I... The client doing some of and the client the client the client the client the client the the client the the client the the client the client the the client very good. Okay, yeah, so since we're waiting for all this, right, so you just continue with the thing. So we, I will just introduce you to the Unity Asset Store first, since it's not inside the Unity itself. Okay, so we can go to the, you just Google Unity Asset Store. Okay, so this is where you need your Unity ID. And I think Unity Hub also, you already require Unity ID. So yeah, so this is the Unity Asset Store. So Unity Asset Store, there's many, many things that you can do. You can download uh, 2D assets, 3D assets, scripts, audios, anything. Okay, so today we're gonna like get some items for our uh, workshop and as well as our first project. So I'll teach you how to like navigate this place a bit. So first of all, let's say we wanna like search 2D platformer. So yeah, just search 2D platformer. And you'll start seeing that many, many, many uh, pack, like uh, asset packs coming out already, but you realize that a lot of things are paid. Okay, so let's say if you want free, you go to the pricing slider, like make it from zero to zero and press this blue button. Well, you can take the free assets. Yeah, there's also a, a tick here, yeah. So you, you, you do that, now you have all the platformers uh, as setbacks that are free. So there's like 94. So if you need even more, there's something called each IO. You can also get asset packs from there. Uh, what? Uh, each IO. Of course, uh, whatever assets you download, make sure to credit the proper artists and the proper developers. But yep. yeah, there's a lot of assets for you to use, so no worries on that. Yep. Usually, if you're using for academic purposes, you can use these assets, but then you must uh, cite them and also give them credits. But yeah, this will, okay, by, rather than like making your own, sometimes if you're not, if you're not really good at art, right, uh, if you try to draw your own, it might look a bit bad. But for, let's say, if you want to get, like sell an idea, right, the best, like the visual was like, it's the first thing people see. So if you use asset pack, you, you make your game stand out a bit better than the others if you or if you cannot draw but you try to draw so SS pack is a really good way to like first showcase your project if you want to get like more people to join your your team okay so yeah free stuff so today we'll be using this asset pack the simple 2d platformer yeah so then you just press add to my assets that's all okay but then uh we have to wait a bit for your Unity to, yeah. <laughs> yes, correct. Add the, uh, no, you can you can click add the assets first. Then we will be, after your Unity is done. We can we we'll, I'll be showing you how to use the asset package manager. Then we can import it in. Yeah, so you can just press it as add to assets. So which uh you can add everything to your assets as much as you want, but um it will make it quite messy at your package manager. So try to only add things that you want for now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So coming back to the Unity editor. So Unity has finally loaded. So hope. Has, has anybody's Unity not loaded yet? 
okay. I think everybody's okay. In the online one also, if you have, your Unity hasn't load, please let me know first. Okay, yeah. Since my computer is lousy. Okay, yeah, my computer sucks. <laughs> okay, so this is your Unity editor. So this is the first, like, the screen that you will see. So you can, these are like windows that you can drag and drop. So first now you will see that you have this thing called the scene as well as the game. So the scene is where you manipulate the assets and the game is what, the, when you press play, right, what the camera sees. So usually what how people would uh, arrange their workspace is you put scene and game side by side like this. Okay, so this is what usually I would do. Okay, so let, let's try to add some items into your Unity scene. Okay, so you can press, go to the hierarchy, win so the hierarchy window, or the hierarchy tab, at the left-hand side. For I think if everybody is like first time in Unity, all should be the same same area. So hierarchy on the left-hand. Then you just right-click and add the 2D object. Go to sprites and add square. Okay, now you see this is your first square. So... You have some tools that basic tools like uh, if you use any art platforms before you probably know all these things before like the move tool, rotate tool, scale tool, and your rack tool. Okay, so let's try to move this. So yeah, then you can see it's updated in real time on your game side, and if you go out, you cannot see anymore. So on the game view itself, you can only see like what the camera sees. So this how how you tell where the camera like the boundaries are is the white color, uh, square here. This is the boundary. So anything that comes, go out, we cannot see anymore. Okay, so this is also where you we will start fixing our aspect ratio. So now you can see that if I move this, the aspect ratio keep changing. So let's say if you are like doing uh, for UI already, right? If you do this free aspect thing, once you like, you it looks nice on your, let's say you arrange all your UI nicely already, but then later, you realize that the aspect ratio is wrong or like you're using a different aspect ratio, it's going to have a lot of issues. So usually what we will do is we'll try to like use one of these presets. So we'll, be, we'll use the 1080p uh, 16 by nine. Yeah, aspect ratio first. Okay, so during the UI lecture or the UI workshop, we will teach you how to make sure all the UI elements don't run away or when you're using like a higher resolution or let's say even ultra wide monitor. Okay, so yeah, so let's play around with the square. So you can do things like uh, move to, which is move here. And you realize when you're moving here, right, this thing or the, called the inspector on your right is also, you can see the numbers are also moving, like the position number. So let's say if I'm moving on the x-axis, it's moving along the x-axis. Okay, so you can either use the tools to move or you can use the actual inspector, the transform to the transform component itself to move. Yeah, so it's the same thing. And Y is here. Okay, since you are doing on 2D space, there won't be Z axis for position. Okay, then rotation tool. Same thing, if you do the rotation, you can see that, yep, rotation is also happening on the transform side. Scale, same thing. If you do scale, your scale is also moving here. So you can also change it from here. Okay, so this is the basic Unity uh, tools that you can use to scale. Increases the size, yeah, like this. Yeah, so, yep, so these are the basic tools that you'll be using. Uh, okay, so this is for prototyping. If you want to put like placeholder everywhere first, then this is a, if you want to use primitive shape first, then you can do. But the thing is, I, or usually we recommend just to get an asset back, then it'll be, make your life a lot easier and also make you have motivation to finish your game. Because if you keep seeing like white squares and uh, white rectangles, I don't think you'll be very motivated <laughs> to finish your game. Okay, yeah, so these are the basic editor things. So just uh, recap, left side is a hierarchy. Hierarchy is all the where all your game objects will live. So let's say I duplicate this square. So now I have two squares. So you can see the hierarchy itself, we have two squares here. The main camera is what the camera, like this game view will see. Let's, let's say if I like delete or disable this camera, right? Then you will, you will have this thing called uh, display one, no cameras are rendering. So if you see this, right, don't panic. It just means that you accidentally deleted your main camera or you disable it so you can just find your main camera again so it's under uh right click camera so so that this is the main camera so if you disable it so this is there's a toggle button beside here the click the tick mark so toggle to on and off 
So sometimes where you might do your game project and realize this like message pop up, then you get very scared. Like it will happen to my game or become like, okay, so then, then you like try to troubleshoot it. So usually you go to your main camera. You If, if it's on your hierarchy, right, you go to the main camera, enable it. Usually you'll come back. But if you accidentally delete it, like let's say like this. Can I delete it? Yep, gone. Okay, then you can go to the camera and call it back. Yeah, but uh, usually. Okay, so this is your um hierarchy. So where all your game objects live. So in, in Unity, all your items of the game is called game objects. Okay, then next one is the scene. So scene is where you manipulate all your game objects. Okay, so one... Okay, so one of the ways you can use two cameras is let's say for mini maps. Sometimes you might need to use two cameras. So yeah, correct. So for mini maps, let's say you have one camera just for the game view. Then you have let's say if it's for a 3D game, right? This main camera is for your world view. Then if you want a mini map, so you put a camera on top of you like that. So this will be like a mini map. So this will use multiple cameras. But there can also be many, many things like portal effects. So let's say you want to make a portal, right? You need two cameras also. Yeah, those are the ones that are more advanced things that you can use more cameras with. Oh, yeah, yeah, correct, correct, correct. Okay, correct. Yeah, so there's this thing here. So if you have multiple cameras, you can change the display up here. But yeah, so I need to get another one. Okay, how do I change the camera button? Yeah. Oh, that's two cameras <laughs> overlay together. You see, yeah. You see, like the actual game scene only has like two of these, but because like two cameras, now I'm seeing double. Yeah, okay. Uh, what are the two? Yeah, because you have Oh, yeah, yeah. It's mostly just moving the sex. So you can actually switch between 2D and 3D quite easily. Then from here, you can mess with the cameras. Like, you have to make sure that the this are inside the cameras kind of thing. But you can also just make it to infographic. And then now there's no depth. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so in Unity, if you use a 2D project, right, this thing will be enabled, this 2D button. So if you click out of it, you go to the 3D view. Okay, so usually you won't need to touch this if you are just doing a pure 2D game. But uh, for this case, you can do this to explore the 3D plane. But since you're doing 2D, we we'll just keep this on. Yeah. So for things like um, two cameras or this thing, Usually, uh, it's for mini maps. I need to use it for mini maps. That's why I'm not really sure about that. So yeah, let's continue with the thing. So this is multi camera. So your main. Ca so yeah. So one of the most important thing is like if you see your camera disappear, don't panic. Just means you actually disable your main camera or you delete your main camera. Okay. So yeah, this is the editor. So scene, game, inspector. So inspector is where. Let's say for each of these components. So let's say I go to the main camera. So these are the components. So this has a transform component. What that transform means is that you can move it around the game space. So this is a transform component. Okay, then we then of course it's a main camera. There's also a camera component. Then they are, yeah, so this and an audio listener. Okay, so these are the components of Unity. 
So each of these one has the different kind of components. So let's say for this one is a sprite or a 2D art asset, right? So they have this thing called the sprite renderer. Okay, so this is also where we'll be adding our scripts next time. So each of these game objects will have their own behavior. Okay, so this is the inspector is where you can view all the components and you can tweak around the component parameters. Okay, so now we go to the bottom, there'll be this thing called project. So project is like the file system for your game. So for now, that's only things like assets and they create for you some uh, pre-made folders already, like settings, because, okay, this one will not be pre-made if you just pick Unity 2D core, but since you're using URP, these are all the URP settings. Okay, we won't be touching that first. Okay, so we have seen. So now we can create some things like uh folder for scripts. So how do you create folder is you just go to the assets, create folder, or you can right click on the folder itself, create. Okay, there's two ways to create. And then uh, you just rename it to scripts. So these are where your scripts will live. Yep, so this will be the file system. So you can see that if there's nothing inside, it will be like a blank file. Okay, so now we'll import, start importing your 2D assets ready. Okay, so to find the package manager, you go to the windows on top here, click on windows and find a package manager. Yep, so now you'll be very confused what is this. So package manager, for yeah, uh, Windows Package Manager. Yeah, okay. So these are all the packages that Unity gives you. Like you can see all the 2D stuff, but we want from Asset Store. So what we do is we go to on top here, you from Packages in Project, change to My Assets. Ah, very good. <laughs> um, yes, Unity. Yeah, let me check that again. Okay, so let me just save this and reopen. Usually that solves issues. Uh, this is, yeah. Yeah, so if everybody having the same error, just restart your Unity. But if not, you will start seeing the packages. Since it's your first time, you'll see the packages appear. There's only one. There should only be one if it's your first time. Okay, yeah, finally. Yeah, so this is what happened if you have a lot of packages, but uh, let's try to find the one that is what we do just now. Okay, found it. Yeah, so this is my package. So what happens is you go here for the first time after you uh, download it from the asset store, you ask you to download into your project. So you press this thing called download at the bottom, right? You should download all the assets from this asset pack. So once you downloaded everything, uh, you just press import. Okay, so now you can see all the, the items that is inside this asset pack. So you can either choose to like take everything or yeah, sorry. Oh yeah, just press install. Yeah, uh yeah. So if it's your first time, like then you ask you to install some dependencies. Okay, so yeah, so you can choose which assets you want, but like this is a small asset pack, so I'll take, be taking everything. But if you have a very, very big asset pack, you can choose pick and choose which one you want. Okay, so this is a small asset pack, so I'll be importing everything. So just press import. Okay. Yep. <laughs> okay, so now you should 
be able to see a new folder appear in your projects. So this thing called simple 2D platformer V2. Okay, so you can see there are um uh, sprite sheets. So these are the, the things, the art assets that we just imported. So these are the sprite sheets that we're using to create our levels, our characters, obstacles, everything. Okay, so usually some of these asset packs comes with their own demo scene. So you can go inside here and open a demo scene. They will show you what is inside the asset pack. It's like a showcase of what they have. So you can uh, view this first if you really want to like know what kind of you can import it, view if you don't like it, you can delete it away. Repeat which part, sorry. Okay, so we have sprites in the asset pack. Yeah, so this is a sprites folder where it contain all the sprites. And sometimes uh for the like usually when you download these asset packs, right, they will have this demo scene. So let's say even for things like tools and scripts, right, you have demo scene, so you can use it to test out everything first. Okay, or see how the the developer intend for you to use their their scripts or this thing. So this is where you have a demo scene. I don't think you have a script, this one. There is. Oh yes, correct. Because you are switching between scenes. So let's say for the previous scene, right, which is the your sample scene, you haven't saved, like you added two squares, right? You haven't saved that. So you just press save. Yeah, if you change without saving, right, when you go back, it'll be a blank screen. No, this one is Oh, yeah, yeah, this one is just a demo. Yeah, showcase of that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, so this is a demo scene that you can see there. If you have a very big asset pack, right, you, you, can, you can really see everything. But yeah, so this is a small one. So they just show you how uh, to play stuff and how it's done. Okay, so now we go back to our scene, which is the sample scene. Just press save. Nothing happened. Okay, so what happens if you actually change scenes right, without saving? So this is very dangerous. So let's say you do many, many things on your scene already, but then you forget to save. That is where it's not recoverable. So just always press Control S when you do something on your scene. Or when you're moving between scenes, please be careful. So let's say I create a bunch of squares. Okay, now I go to the demo scene. I accidentally press don't save. If you go back to your scene again, all your changes will be lost. So be careful. Yeah, there's no way for to recover from this. So always save your scenes. Okay, so now let's start putting all the art asset packs and like let's create a small level first. Then I'll show you the, the manual way of like uh putting art assets into your scene. And next I'll introduce you town maps. Yeah, correct. So the one will be like a like a drag and drop painting system, but for now I will show you the, the, the manual way. So this can be tedious, but for some things, no choice you have to use. For example, uh, like, like a player character, you cannot use the tile map system because it's in a grid. Because your players or your obstacles right, might not be exactly in this square. So you can see these squares, right? So if you're using a tile map, your S sprites will be stuck inside these square boxes. So let's say if you want a the obstacle in the in between these two square boxes, uh, you must use like the freehand method that I'm going to show you, or the freehand method that I'm going to show you yeah, to place your assets. What so now, uh, tau maps. So uh, we will introduce that later. Yeah. Tau maps. Tau. Yeah, tau map. It's in the slides also. Yeah. Okay, so we just show you how to make a a scene. So we go to your sprites. So you have all these sprite sheets. The the sprite sheet that we are interested in now is the platform sprite sheet. So if you open up right. You can see there are many, many uh, little sprites that you can use. So we try to create one with grass. So we just keep this, this, see, I'm dragging and drop. Just drag and drop. Yeah, just a single one. Just keep dragging and dropping. Then you can see that now I want to make a platform, but it looks very weird. So because it's like not perfectly aligned. So you, you can try to OCD your way and try to align everything. But I mean, it kind of works, but usually you don't want to do this. So that's why you have a tile map system. So, but yeah, for things like spikes, right? Let's say I want to put it in between here. So I have no choice. I cannot use the tile map. So I have to use manual. Okay, so this is a very easy way. So we can also group things. So we have these singles, right? These are a bunch of singles. So we can put it under a, a folder system or let's say under an empty game objects. So now, uh, sorry, which one? Singles. Okay, yeah, singles. So, okay, now we see all the singles here. You can group them up and put it under a, empty game object to make it a group. Okay, so what happens is, let's say I create a new empty game object. So right click on the hierarchy, create empty. So let's name this platform. 
Okay, so it's just an empty one. So remember to reset your transform. Okay, so that uh, if you click on this platform, it'll be exactly at the middle of the, the, the scene. Okay, so this is just a good practice. If not, right, if you put all your child inside uh, inside your platform, you have a lot of issues if it's not centered. Okay, so now we can put everything in this singles right under this platform. So you click and shift click everything inside and drag it inside platforms. So now all these singles are inside this thing called platform. Okay, so do platform, go to the transform, right click reset, or you can put the position zero zero zero. Transform reset. Okay, then you put all the items inside the platform. So now we have this like a group called platform. So if you control D to okay, you close this one, right? It's just a platform. Inside you have some sprites. So you close this, you duplicate this, you can have another platform. Yeah, so you can easily create platforms, although it's not really even. Yeah, so now we have like a small level itself already. So it's pretty fast to prototype your level <coughs> like this. Okay, but you can see that if you scrutinize this, yep, it's not nice. Okay, so now we're introducing to you the tile map system. Uh, how do you do this? Oh, control D, yeah. Yeah, copy. Paste. Uh, you cannot do it in the scene. So I can click on this one, like the platform. Okay, usually when you click in the scene, right, you click the actual like, uh, child of the, the platform. So if you control D, you only like duplicate this. Okay. So that's why you go to the hierarchy and click the the parent or or the folder that contains all these sprites. Yeah, so you go to that one, control D. Usually you have to you can take all of them. Okay. Yeah, so now let's go back to the slides and see where we are now. So we are done. Now we are going to the tile maps already. Okay, so we'll be on slide 14 now. So tile map will be a bit hard to follow. So if you really cannot catch what I'm saying, then you can also use these slides to help you on the creation step, step by step. Okay, I put the actual like how to create step by step on the slides also. Okay, so now let's start first. So now let's delete all these platforms or you can just hide them all by checking here. So we can check this, the checkbox, yeah. You select all then check. So don't want them anymore. Then the spike, I just want to make it disappear. Okay, I'm keeping on the platform so that I can show you uh, manually, like how you put manually, plus also using the tile map system. You can see the tile map system is perfect. Like the, there won't be any gaps, there won't be like mismatch in your platform. Okay, so now right click, I'll be making your tile maps. Where's my tile maps? Okay, 2D rectangular tile maps. Okay, so for platformers, we are using rectangular tile maps, but for let's say if you are doing other things that require different shapes, like hexagonal or this thing, for some reason, maybe like a turn based RTS kind of game, then maybe use other stuff. But for uh, isometric, I'm not sure, but we only explore before rectangular hexagon. Gone. Is there such an isometric tile map? No. Yeah, never explored that before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's actually 2D, but uh, it looks 2.5D. Oh, it's 2.5D. I thought that it's 3 d yeah, so isometric can use like the 3D effect, but when it's actually 3D, so it's quite cool. Oh, why they don't just make a 3D way to mm -hmm. use the camera tool, use a professional camera tool. Okay, it's more powerful than, I mean, this one's only the, the elements are only rotating, like if you drag just move to it, it's just like rotated outwards or like, trying to rotate and get like a natural shape. Yeah, 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 it's just like the tile map is more Yeah. yeah, we can also show the hexagonal. So if you are doing turn based or these kind of like grid based uh games, then you can also use actual isometric uh, sorry, uh hexagonal grid with uh tile maps. Yeah, okay, so let's go back to make our rectangular tile map. So right click, 
go to 2D object, tile map, rectangular. Okay, now you start seeing the squares become like even darker. So now wait, this is where you can start putting your tile maps. Okay, so we go back to our slides. So we are here already. So you create a grid. Then this grid will create something called a tile map. So tile map is where you put all the items. So tile maps, so you can also have multiple tile maps. So you can think things like the platform itself, foreground, background, all this thing you can put as a tile map. So for, for now, since you're only having platform, let's rename this tile map to platform so you don't get confused in the future next time. So how do you rename? You go to, you click on the tile map itself, go to inspector, go under the name, click on the name and just rename it to platform. So this is where all your platform assets, uh, the, sorry, tile maps will live. Okay, so now I go to the next slide. So now we need to create a tile palette. So this itself is just a sprite. So we need to create convert this into things like actual tile palettes that can be painted on this thing called the tile map. So usually it's not automatic. So you cannot just paint on sprites. So you have to convert it to something called tile palette. So how do we do that? We need to enable the tile palette uh, window first. So how do we do that is window, how you do the asset package, uh, the package manager just now, window. 2D tile palette, 2D tile palette. Okay, so this thing will come out. Okay, so uh, if you like to have floating windows or tabs, you can leave it here, but usually I'll just talk it beside games. Okay, so you can switch between game and tile palette. Okay, so now you have to create a new palette. So you go create a palette and just name it as platform because this will be the name or because we will be only uh, importing platform uh, sprites and converting them into tile palette here. So we just go here, create new palette, name it to platform. So this is just a naming thing, so it doesn't matter if you name it something else, but it's good to have a standard naming for everything. So this, so that means this tile palette will only contain platform items. So create. Okay, so they ask you for a place to save. So, Okay, so before we do this, right, we go do some uh, housekeeping first. So we go to assets. We have uh, some folders. We, we create a new folder called art folder. Hey, oops, why did I create a script? Wow. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> okay, create new folder, art. Okay, so art folder is here. Then we have a subfolder inside. We just put everything, the tile. Folder, tiles. So I'm just going to chuck all the tile map stuff. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to... Okay, usually there will be a better way to structure this, but I'll cover that next time. But for now, we're just going to add, create a new folder called tile map. So all the tile map stuff, like the tile, the tile palette itself, like all the tiles itself, and the tile palette, all will be saved under here. Okay, later you'll see it's quite messy, but next time I'll introduce you how to like do a, a restructuring of your folders. Okay, so we have this asset art tile maps. Okay, now we can create a new palette. Go back to the new palette, rename this to platform again. Sorry. Press create. And now you find the actual assets, art, tile maps. And once you're inside this one, press select folder. Okay, now you see that there's inside your tile map folder, right? This uh, tile palette has been created. So tile palette is something that will hold all the tiles. Okay, so now how do we finally put our sprites inside the tile palette? Is you go back to our sprites in the in the thing that you imported. So in your asset, and just drag and drop this entire thing inside here. So go back to the platform here, the platform here, click, drag and drop here. Then now we ask you another folder again. Okay, so now we go back to the asset art. Tile map, just chuck everything inside here for now. Select folder. See, now your tiles has been, your sprites has been converted into things called the tile, and it's now inside the tile palette. And now we go back to the art, right? You see this tile map here? Now there's a lot of random stuff inside here. So that's why we need to uh, have some housekeeping next time. But yeah, you see these are the tile objects. So these are no longer called sprites anymore. So this become, your sprites has been converted to tile, and now your tile palette has these tiles inside that we can paint on to our, our tile map now. Okay, so a lot of tile here, tile there. So tile map is where on the scene itself holds the tile. Tile palette is 
the actual like a uh, game uh, like a uh, object that holds tiles that to be painted. Okay, so we go to our tile palette. Okay, this is like painting. So you can see there are more tools now again. So you go under tile palette, you have like your select tool, move tool. The more the thing that we're interested now is the paint tool. So let's say you can go here, and we can just drag and paint one line. So if you if you scrutinize this now, it's perfectly straight. So you go to game view. It's perfectly straight. Yeah, yeah, we'll I'll repeat this one again. Okay, so we go to our tile palette. Make sure you created a new new palette already, which is called platform. And make sure you have also uh drag your sprites, which is the platform sprites, into the tile palette. Okay, then now you see that your tile palette has this platform tile palette object. Okay, then you can click any of this one. And you can just paint them on like this. So click any one and just paint. Okay, so this is like painting. So once you paint, you can also use the eraser tool and make it disappear also, yeah. So now with this, right, you can paint on platforms easier. So now you can also do one more thing is you can also pick a chunk of it, like one chunk like this and paint also. Okay, so one, one item is you click on the tile itself. You click, then you drag. So it's just one tile. If you want like entire object like this, entire mountain thingy, you click at that. You just go to your tile palette, drag, left click, drag. Then you have this one. Now you can paint on like this. Okay, so we're just going to paint on a simple platform. Okay, so these are all your platforms. Okay, so now we compare back to our platform previously one. You can see how crooked it is compared to the one we used the tile palette and paint on. Yep. So this is the power of tile palettes. So let's say you want to put obstacles on top so you can have a spike here. For spikes, we don't use tile palette because we want to put, let's say, in the middle. So instead, yeah. Yep. Oh no, it's the entire world. You can put it anywhere. Like, is the camera is just how, uh, what the, the the player will see. So the camera usually won't be static like this. Let's say it, you'll be moving along with the player. So, but for the town, the town map itself, right, is an entire world. So Unity allows you to put anywhere, like very fast. So you can make a very, very big game. Then you can scroll, like depending on how the camera works, right, you can scroll through it. So let's say I have many platforms out here. So this can be a very big platformer with a lot of platforms. So as long as you move the camera properly. So let's go back to the game scene. So let's say if you move the camera along, right? We'll be doing a camera movement script next time. So let's say you can move along. See? Yeah, so this will be an entire level. Yeah, the camera. I'm just uh man manually moving it. Usually when you move the camera, you're moving your scripts. Like you'll be either following a player or something. Okay, so you click on your main camera and you either use the tools that we used before, the move tool, the one that will have this thing here. Or you can use your inspector under the transform. You can play around with the X and Y axis. Yep, yep. Okay, then uh, if you're done with it, just reset it to zero and zero, so then you're back to the middle. Okay, yeah, so in total map, you can spend entire game. You can make it very big, actually. There's really like no hard limit on it. Okay, so, yep. So we have created platforms that are perfect, like pixel perfect using the tile map system instead of painting on using by hand. Okay, so, yeah. I go back to the tile palette. And then this one, is it? All oh, right, okay. So what happens is you select 
let's say let's say I want to change a tile, right? Let's say I accidentally place this down, but I don't want to erase and redo. So let's say I want this. Press this, I can move. So wait, okay, so uh repeat again, it's not a bit confusing. So if we go to the first one, the first one is a selection tool, select an area of the grid. So you go anywhere in the grid. Let's say I want this this part, entire part to move up one square. So you select this on the left hand side on your scene. Then now you go to the move selection, move up one. Yeah, you can move this entire chunk. Yeah, instead of erasing and redoing it. So this is a way to save time. Then also, right, let's say if you are doing a very big uh biome. Let's say yeah. Um I'm just gonna make it very okay, I cannot make it very uh okay. I got this. I want to let I'm showing you how how what I can do if I want to fill the entire thing in the middle instead of painting everything on. Yeah. So in the middle now you don't want to paint this like this, right? If it's very big, it's gonna be very annoying. So you can use the paint bucket too and just paint it in there. Yeah. So these are some tips to save time. Okay, so now uh let's move on with the next part. So adding your character itself and introducing some physics to it and also collision. So uh, this one is just a basic one. We're not going to touch any script first. So now we're just going to put our player inside this world. Okay, so we go to our player. So remember, we say that a uh, player, we're not going to use tile map. We're just going to manually drag and drop him inside. Okay, so now you go back to the simple 2D platformer asset pack. Go under the sprites. Go under player. And okay, now you can see there's many player ones. Uh, sorry, many player sprites. So this is for later when you're doing animations. That's why your, your artist will have to, for 2D games, have to make this, uh, let's say for one animation, like frame by frame. So these are different frames. So zero, one, either. So this is the two either animation. You can, okay. I'm not sure you can see that. Uh, so if I switch fast enough within this, so this is your animation for idle. So this is what we'll be doing on our, on our third, Workshop. So this is the animation. So next one, this one will be the run and jump animation. So if I do quite fast, yeah. So this is the jump animation. Then last one will be the run animation. Yeah. Okay. So for now, we just want to place put a placeholder for the player. So usually, what we do is we put the idle zero onto your game world. So the idle zero is usually the first frame. We just put it on the game world here. So now you go back to the game. You see your player is now. On the game. Uh no, under the simple two D platform, the one that we imported. Yeah, so it's under the. Yes, correct. We are placing idle zero in a scene as a placeholder for your player. So we haven't any animation yet, so it's just be a static layer. Okay, so now we'll try to play the game, but okay, we're not moving a player. But the problem is now when you press play, right? The player should actually fall down onto the platform and just stay there. But the thing is, it's not moving. It's not doing anything. Because we haven't introduced or we haven't any physics component to this player. Okay, so we need to add some physics component. So he will start reacting to gravity and things. And also collision with the platform. Okay, so this is very easy. So that's why I say use game engine. So this kind of thing we don't need handle. So what we do is we go to the player idle zero. Go down here, think of the add component. Okay, so it's running, then you just press yeah. Oh yeah, uh one more thing very uh dangerous for Dynasty is let's say I'm in play mode and I add a bunch of components. I know okay, yeah. And I add like colliders, a bunch of colliders. Oops, sorry, what's this? Okay, never mind, I don't care. Okay, so let's say I've added a component like if you and play the game, whatever changes you make will be gone again. Okay, so if you're in a play mode, be careful. Like let's say if you're in a play mode, whatever changes you make in play mode, when you unplay the game, all will be gone. You cannot you cannot get it back. Okay, so make sure when you're doing something to your game or like adding items to your game, adding components, make sure you're not in a play mode. So make sure your play button is not blue color. So if it's in blue color, like I showed you just now, whatever component you added will disappear. So let's say I added a collider. But then I'm playing my game, no longer the collider is gone. Okay, yeah, so be careful about that. 
you might potentially uh, lose a lot of hours of progress. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So it just quirks. Like, oh. yeah, so the two things that I've introduced, I mean, like uh, two warnings that I've given now is like the scenes, if you're changing between scenes, be careful, press control S or save it before you change scene. If you don't save and come back to the same scene again without saving, all will be gone. Another thing is the play mode. Make sure you're not in play mode and you're doing anything. If you are, or whatever done in play mode, unplay, gone. Okay, so now we add some physics to our character. So now we go this, we go under add component, add this thing called rigid body 2D because we are a 2D game. So we just add the 2D. So if you are using, making a 3D game, add this thing called rigid body itself without the 2D. Okay, you press this. And now when we press play, uh, it will just have all the physics items. So you have things like mass. So your basically your sprite right will be affected by physics like gravity or this thing. But also you can make sure it's you can also do things. You can also change it to like static or this thing to not make it affect by gravity. So this one will be covered later. But for now we just not today. No no programming. No scripting. No nothing. It's just a introduction of basic components. So the most important component for a player is a rigid body. So that you can uh like do things like interact with the like get physics applied to your character like the gravity itself as well as collisions between items. Okay, so now we just add a rigid body to the you press play, if you see the player should start moving down. Yeah, but it moves off the platform. Okay, so what happens is this is because I haven't had any colliders. So we need to have colliders or things to have collision so that it stops the player from going down ind indefinitely. Okay, so we need add colliders. So we go to our player, add a collider, box collider 2D. So if you do this right and you go to your scene, you realize that there will be a green color box. Wait, let's change to another tool. A green color box surrounding your player. So I take out the box collider again. You should have nothing. And if I create a box collider, you should have a green box that come out. So this is the collision area. So you can fine-tune this by pressing the edit collider to fine-tune it. Let's say if it's too big or too small. Let's say this guy is too... Now you want it to fit him perfectly. So this is also known as hitbox for some people. Yeah. Uh, nice. Hitbox. Yeah, hitboxes. Okay, so now let's press play. And the player should still fall off the screen. Because only the player has collider. The platform doesn't have a collider yet. So that's why it's still moving out. It's still dropping off the scene. Okay, so now we what we need to do is we need to go to the platform, which is our tile map, right? And we need to add a component, a special component called the tile map collider. So we go here, tile map collider 2D. Okay, so box collider is uh okay, there's many kind of colliders, box collider, capsule collider, polygon collider. So these are like colliders will be wrapping around your sprites. But let's say, for example, Tau Map right, is a very big thing. So you are not expected to put boxes for everything. And because these are disjoint, like you see this platform and this platform, there's a gap. So if you put a box between this one, right, so let's make a box like, like so, your collider will be very huge. And But you only want to cover this one and this one. So what Tau Map Collider does is Tau Map Collider helps you wrap it. So, okay, let's, I think I'll show you it's better. So Tau Map Collider, you see now all the green boxes are on the, on the, platforms automatically. Yeah. Okay, so now when you press play, your player should land on the platform. I hope. Yeah, it does. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. So this is your uh town map. So, it's, so today we already covered what we need to cover. So sadly no programming. So uh yeah, so we already reached our one hour mark plus more. Okay, so what we learned today is your importing of assets. So asset store, the important thing is you don't want to show black uh just primitive shapes to your whoever that you are pitching your idea to. So you can use like if you really don't know how to draw, don't know how to make music, you can always use these free asset packs to enhance your game first and recruit more people to join your team. Okay, then the next one is uh how to use these assets like but now we only teach you how to use the art assets. So how to manipulate art assets. You can use freehand for this uh, 2D stuff, like just now I say, for the, make the platforms. But it's not as nice. So we have in Unity, there's something called Tau Map, 
Yeah, you can just drag and drop everything in and you make like everything perfect straight. Okay, so yeah, you can also make like weird shapes like this. And I think Tile Map for Lighter will still help you if I'm not wrong. Uh, okay, as always, yeah, see? Yeah, when I play it gone, so be careful when I play mode again, as always. Yeah, then you can see if I even add this weird shape, right? There's a green color uh collider that's automatically made for you if you're using tau map collider. I'm not sure you all can see, but yeah, there's a green color one. Yeah. So even for all shapes you do for you, so that's why I use tau map collider. Yeah. So rather than trying to put everything manually, Unity has this thing neat feature called tau map collider. So yeah, that's all for today. Yeah, so next week we'll be doing player movement, uh, as well as collision. So collision with your spikes, you die. Collision with coins, you add points. So this will be what we cover next week. So the actual programming itself. So how to move the player. So now we have this thing called rigid body. We can manipulate the rigid body like add force. So let's say if you want to move left, you add force to the left. You want to move right, you add force to the right. So that's what we'll be doing by script next week. Yep. So that is all. And inside here, if you are interested, there's also more helpful resources for you to follow. Uh, just Unity guides as well as game development in general. So you can view all these things in your own time. But uh, these are more advanced. But yeah. So so yeah, next week you'll be doing scripts. Everybody's favorite. So yeah, this will be a snippet of your script. Uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you.